Hi, and welcome to Ember in Action Series Episode 6, Ember CLI Update. So, good news everyone! Ember CLI was updated a couple of days ago to version 1.13. How is that, you ask? It was only 027 before, and now, in one go, updated to 1.13? Nonsense. Well, from now on, all Ember-related packages will have version numbers in sync. So this means that we have Ember, Ember CLI, and Ember Data versions 1.13. That's really cool and pretty convenient. Another excellent news is next Ember release will be 2.0. Exciting times, right? So in this episode, we'll update everything to 1.13 version. Then we'll migrate to JSON API. We'll set Ember data to use JSON API adapter and we'll change our fake server to respond with proper JSON API. So let's get started. Update process is very straightforward. We just follow instructions. Okay, first of all, we need to uninstall globally Ember CLI. So after that, let's clean cache for uh, NPM and for Bower. And now we're ready to install globally new version of Ember CLI. Excellent. Ember CLI is installed, so now we need to update our project. So for that, first of all, we need to remove node modules, Bower components, dist and temp folders. Then we need to install Ember CLI locally for this project and we do it with npm install dash dash save dev Ember CLI. And we even can specify the version number which is 1 Point thirteen point one. Okay, good. Now we need to install npm packages. Good. And Bower packages. So the last thing, very important one, is to run ember init command. And it will ask us, do we want to overwrite router? No, we don't want to do that. And application HBS also no. But Bower JSON, let's see the diff of this file. You can see that here we update Ember, we update Ember Data, QUnit, Resolver, but also we got rid of Bootstrap. So just note to yourself that we need to re-add Bootstrap back. So yes, the package JSON. Also let's have a look. And you can see that here we also update stuff, but we get rid of Express, Glob, Morgan, and Body Parser right here at the top. We use these packages for our mock server, so we need to reinstall them. Okay, noted. Yes. JS hinder C, also yes. Helpers start application. Yes, we didn't do any testing, so we save there. Okay, so now let's install our packages. We install Bower save bootstrap back. And we install npm save dev express body parser, morgan, and glob. Okay, done. Let's have a look in the browser. Let's run our server. And here we go, our application. If we go to books, we can see that it works actually. We can see the Hamlet, we can see one flow or cuckoo's nest, we can add new books. So it works, but it's ugly. And also in console, we see that we use an Ember 1.13 version and data 1.13 as well. Nice. So why do we not have Bootstrap style in here? So that happens because now, if we go here into the file tree, you can see that we have Ember CLI build file. This is the new file, and this file replaces Brock file. So let's have a look into here. Okay, and right here, I will open the Brock file just to see the difference. And you can see that now we export the function, and then at the end of this function, we return app to tree. So basically all we need to do is to copy and paste this from here to here. Okay, let's save it. Let's restart server. And now if you go back to browser, you can see that our styling is back. Excellent. Okay, now starting from version 2.0, Ember Data's default adapter is going to be JSON API adapter. And as we are not very far in our development and don't have any server yet, let's use this JSON API spec. You can read about it in jsonapi.org site and just view the specification 
about it. But basically what we need to know now is that we need to respond with object inside of it will have data and inside of it the two required fields are type and ID of the resource and then attributes object with the data about this resource. So what we have now is just a collection of books. It's an array of objects and we need to have this. So let's do this. For that, let's open our adapters application.js file and here instead of this rest adapter we'll have json api adapter. Let's save it. Go back to browser and now you can see that we have nothing. Let's go to books and you see that we do not have this list here anymore. So in network tab we can see that everything works. We have no errors whatsoever but now response is not right and Ember data do not understand it. So let's fix it. Let's go to mocksbooks.js file and here we have this collection of books. We'll leave it at that. It's just as we return some data from the database. But here we'll make some adjustments. So first of all, this one is not correct. What we want to do is we want to return data and let's define this data right here. So that's going to be a collection. So we return a collection of objects and each of this collection will have type, ID and attributes object. So let's iterate through books for each. We'll have item here and we're going to push object to data. And inside of this object we'll have type which is books and that's the pluralized resource of the Ember data. In Ember data we have book so the type of the resource is books. Then we have ID and that's going to be item ID and this ID should be a string. So let's cast it to string and then we have attributes object. And here we'll have title which is item title, description which is item description and author which is item author. Also let's be very cool and let's set content type header to appropriate one that's application slash vnd dot api plus json and that's the header that we must specify for the json api. So let's save it, go back to browser and now our list is back. How cool is that? It works. So later in the series we'll implement real server and then we'll practice with JSON API for real. Now let's try to add new book. Spoiler alert, that's gonna be disappointing. Add it and of course we fail. Let's look into this request we made and in headers right at the bottom you can see that Ember data actually sends JSON API request, which is cool, but also we have an error here. Attributes are empty. Where are these old valuable data that I entered? Hmm. So we need to fix this. For that, let's go to component bookform.js. And here, instead of simple book, we need to use getter. So we'll use get book like this. And let's remove this one. So now if we go back and make another cool request, we'll see here at the bottom that attributes now are filled with proper data. Excellent. So we are making the request to the server. So now we need to fix server to get this data and save this data. Because right now ID is now nothing happens and we've got two errors here. So again, let's, let's go back to mocks and go a little bit below to the post request. So let's redo this route. I'm gonna remove everything from here. So in the end we need to return data object and as we return only one resource we do not need to return the collection and just the object. We'll have type here as usual books and ID which will have new ID and attributes which going to be new book attributes. 
Okay, so now we need to define these things. So first, let's define new book. And that's going to be attributes of the new book that were provided in attributes in our request. So to get them, we use request body data attributes. Now we need to calculate new ID. So we do new ID equals books dot length. Nothing changed here, plus one. And after that, let's push object to books. That's going to be title, the new book title description with new book description author with new book author and ID with new ID. So we get data from attributes, we calculate new ID, then we push books to our collection in a server. In real world it would be database. And then we send back data object with ID and with attributes. And of course we need to copy this line from here and paste it here. Let's go to browser and let's try it out. And we have an error. We can't read property attributes of undefined. That means that here this data is undefined and that means that our body parser is not working. Why is that? Well, if we go back here and let's look in the headers here, you can see that request header actually has content type as application JSON API. And that's why body parser does nothing about it because it only parses application JSON. So to fix this, we need to go to our server index file .js, and inside of here we need to specify option type which is application slash vnd dot api plus json. Let's save it, let's go back to browser and let's try it again. And yes, we did it! As you can see here we made the post request and the review is the data object with attributes and with new ID with types of books and we have ID here, so everything works as it should. So that's all for this episode. One painful point is updating without test is quite a scary experience. Of course, our application is extremely small yet. But even on this small scale, I was a little bit uncomfortable. And we'll dive into testing later in the series when we got our basics. If you like this episode, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video and share it with your friends, or follow me on Twitter. If you want to ask any question or simply say hello, go to my blog ramzalatik.net. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.